Welcome back. In this video I rotate the hole 90 degrees so I can insert the freshly painted keel. It hasn't gone unnoticed that since the last video I've gone well over a thousand subscribers and that tells me somebody's enjoying the video so that's so rewarding to see um, that all the effort I put into making these videos is being appreciated and people are coming back for more. This bulb has had more than its fair share of fairing, but I went to put on some paint yesterday. There was a crust on the top of the um, surface, so I'd used that much, so it's not too bad. I didn't lose too much paint. I tried stirring it up, didn't work, so I've got to go and get some new paint today. So I took the opportunity to do a bit more fairing. All ready for painting, just about to mix up the Duropox paint. My plan is to do one side and um, let it go off. I'll be putting two coats on, wet on wet, and then um, tomorrow I might have to do a little bit of filling first. As you can see, the spraying didn't go very well. I think it was partly because I found out afterwards the breather on the can was partly blocked, and also it's a very thick paint with a lot of solids in it and I had the most reducer you can have in it but I wasn't getting it right this time. It kind of went okay. I didn't mix enough paint. Why did I stop spraying and start brushing crazily? Pinholes. Spraying on paint doesn't fill the pinholes and there are pinholes and um, it's inevitable. So I thought I learnt that with the hull but I'd forgotten that lesson it to either roll or brush on some the first coat because this paint is the um, primer the undercoat and the top coat it just gets a fine wet and dry as you might remember for the hull don't be concerned about those dimples there I dug them out because they are super pinholes and I'll do some filling of those when I turn the board over and bulb over and um, paint around from the other side up to here. And now I just need to turn it over so I can paint the other side. I think I have a plan. Well I thought I had a plan. I can't just flip it over on the bench because the um, top of the dagger board had some beams in the shed. Every time I've lifted the boat and turned it over, I had to set up a new lift way of lifting it. So I'm using the um, rudder pinhole bearings holes where I anticipate them to be this time. Making up the steel plate, um, which will have a bit of pipe scaffolding tube coming out here about this far. And I'll also put some G clamps on there and I think it'll be amply strong enough. But the boat's getting heavier and heavier. And when I put the boat down, the intention of this rollover, 90 degrees, is to insert the dagger board um, sideways into the boat. So <clears throat> this has got to be strong, but it's just temporary. This is pretty much how I've turned over all my boats. I used to turn over the steel boats that I used to build this using a similar method, putting a bit of pipe out each end, a pivot point, which on a steel boat is quite easy. You just weld it with braces to the hull and you can grind it off. And it's like it was never there. The bulb will definitely want to roll the boat back down, so I'll have to restrain it. Um, tomorrow when I hopefully do that so 
I need to be able to put G-clamps on here, so I'll probably put the pipe in this area somewhere. The reason I'm doing a big push today is because I want to get a coat of paint on the other side of the dagger board and bulb. So there's a bit of sanding to do there. And I want to get a bit of paint around the dagger board casing that um, went through the hull on the bottom and I haven't had a chance to um, finish off the painting around that on the outside of the hull. So here we go. Um, the day before I'm putting the dagger board in, I'm um, lifting up the boat and we'll see how it goes. up and fortunately it's proud of the hull so it's basically just the sand off you can see some Kevlar in there You guys are noisy. Stop ducking around. <laughs> you come <I'm> <laughs> you come bearing thread bar and um, connecting nut. <laughs> Welcome back. Brent's just sailed um, from Tahiti to Samoa to Tonga. I think he liked it. Oh yeah. Good fun. <laughs> Yeah, this is a highly critical part. Say when. So this is in. Oh yeah, quite a bit of difference. Yeah. So that's 
that way. Yeah. Yep. That looks good. Is it actually entering for it at all yet? It's it's nice and loose there. Not quite entering there though. Oh, that's in. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's in both sides. Yeah. Okay, cool. It's in about an inch. Ooh. Now you're gonna keep a real close eye on level for me too. I bet it's just so that's sort of sloppy there now. So I bet just check the boat hasn't changed. And basically, I have to keep it at the same angle so the bubbles could be right up to that line. Right, so you need to go down a little yeah. fraction there. Down a fraction. Fraction of what? Half or whatever you got. Just hold it up just in case I'll make it go too fast. <laughs> you reckon? <laughs> this is tricky actually. This is very sensitive. Well, I don't like it. You know what? I think I'd rather make yes. the boat. Yeah, yeah. Because it won't. It's one of those valves which is with all that weight, it'll, and then it could lever there incredibly. If it gets a little bit tight, we might have to just wobble the boat around a little bit. Going in? Yes. So I should think so. So it's stiffened up? Yeah. There. Okay, so it's the boat needs to go a little bit like that. Yes. So just, just push it in a little bit. And I'll let it go. So there's not a lot of weight on it. That's all right. So we just have to keep doing that and keep an eye on it. Oh, we have to take this off very soon. Yes. And that's going to put not a lot of weight on the boat because it's hanging there. You got another stick that I could leave it here as well? I'd rather you keep the real close eye okay. on the air. One of us needs to be watching that very carefully. Um, so, is it as much as it needs to go in right now? Or? Okay, that's all right. I'll put it over a bit now. It's a bit sideways better than I thought it would. So, if you can see that gap open at the top, so yes. that, that means it's moved when we push it. And yeah, if so you keep your left hand on there. Yeah. Um, as long as we're not hanging up at all. No, it's sliding in crack. Alright. Yep, nice. That makes sense to have the boat moving rather than the, this thing for height. because the tripod's in the way. It that should go your around. way a little bit. Yeah, that way a little bit. Yes, that's nice. If you buy an engine lifter, guys, buy one with big wheels. Yes. The way you do this is probably take it all outside, get a crane to lift it up, but this is suits my budget much better. Okay, it isn't jammed up yet. I was a bit nervous the boat construction would warp my centerboard case. There's your ducks arrived. <laughs> ducks always hang out when the action happens. Gotta watch that clock now too. It's probably okay for now. But crikey, nearly in. Yep. Wow. What does it look like? Oh the knots are hitting. Yes. But that's alright. Don't look at that. I didn't want to get too carried away. You gotta leave some imperfection yeah, yeah. there, isn't that? In someone's art world. A sign of something. Creativity. <laughs> right, yeah, the knots won't let go any further. So we now we move into a move into your back to the camera. 
<laughs> so one roll back. So one roll back. Um, that, what can we do about that? Because we want to lower it down. I think if we fasten it now from the other side with that thread bar in. The keel is fastened in position at this time with that short bit of thread bar which goes through to a coupling nut, a long nut that goes on top of one of the keel bolts so it's very secure. Eventually when you drop the keel down there will be a long bar much longer than this one which allows the keel to drop down to its position where you can put two through, two through bolts through the casing inside the boat. When it's fully raised you can also, when it's sitting on the trailer, you'll drop the bulb down onto the trailer support and then you can remove that long bar which will be poking up. Yes. Thanks, man. <laughs> Thanks for the help. That's you're quite a milestone we've achieved. And um, good you're back from your sail, all self, safe and sound, with lots of ideas for your next boat. Yep. A deer foot? Yes, definitely. <laughs> Why not? A fuller would be alright. A fuller? Yeah. Version of a deer foot. Yeah. Well, thanks for watching once again. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like and um, a subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And the next video, I'll be building the trailer. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>